Thank you, Dr. Jiang, for the kind introduction. And I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to be here to present my work on the polyphenolic compounds from selected Malaysian ferns and the potential medicinal properties. So since my colleague just now has already introduced about Unisys Science Malaysia, so I will go straight um, to my slide. Ferns. As we all know, are vascular seedless plants which propagate through spores germination and it is commonly called teratophytes. There are more than 11,000 fern species in the world and about 1,200 fern allies. About 50% of the ferns are distributed in the old world tropics and in Malaysia itself, there are about 1,136 Ferns, uh, fern species with 630 species in the peninsula Malaysia and 720 species in Sabah and Sarawak. So this shows that about 10% in the world's fern species are found in Malaysia. Now ferns can be uh, divided into four classes, 11 orders and 37 families and the largest class is called polypodiopsida, which contains seven orders and 33 families. The other classes are minor classes. And the uses of fern. There are many uses of fern. Uh, and I'm sure many of you can recognize some of these ferns. Uh, these are used as ornamental plants in houses, in pots, in gardens, or uh, flower decoration. Ferns are also a source of food. In Malaysia itself, there are two ferns which are popular, uh, popular uh, as vegetables. Uh, one, we call them puchuk paku. And you can see, this is the way to prepare a okay, uh, spicy dish. And we have puchuk bidin, which is also cooked into a vegetable. Ferns are also used as traditional medicine in different parts of the world. For example, the first fern, Asplenium nidus. Okay, it is used traditionally to ease labor pain in childbirth, stings, bite, sore, and ulcer. And we have this fern here, which is used traditionally to reduce swelling, strain, relieve pain, and the root, the latex from the root of this fern is used for the treatment of diarrhea and gonorrhea. This fern, the root, are used for treatment of cough, headache, fever, and dyspepsia. And also, one more example of fern, which is used traditionally to treat boils, ulcers, and wound infection. So despite all these different uses of fern, especially as food, and traditional medicine, very limited research has been conducted to evaluate the pharmacological effect of ferns. So therefore, my group has chosen to work on uh, indigenous fern found in Malaysia. And today, I'm going to present to you on two different ferns. Okay, the first fern, which I've already introduced just now, is used as a food. Uh, usually, the young fronts are the one taken as vegetable. We can, if you look at this picture, this is the picture of young fronts. Okay, and you can see that the the fronts are actually very tender, soft, and it has a little bit of reddish hue, whereas the mature fronts are a bit more stiffer, and it is thick and rough. So, in our study, we've investigated the fronts separately to uh, distinguish the edible 
uh, young fronts and the matured fronts in terms of uh, phytochemical uh, as well as uh, biological uh, differences. So first we compare um, the phytochemicals of the hexane extract of the young fronts as well as the matured fronts. And you can see in this GCMS chromatogram, um, in the young fronts, we find many uh, fatty acids as well as neophytodiene and trans phyto. And we also have the sterols here. Whereas in the mature front, there's very little content of um, its fatty acids as well as the aliphatic hydrocarbon. We see the sterols, but there is no fucosterol. It's found in the young fronts. You don't see in the matured front. And there is this one unique peak, which corresponds to alpha tocopherol, which is not found in the young front. We then uh, compared the biological activity. We evaluated the anticholine esterase activity of the young fronts and the matured fronts. And we found a great difference in terms of the anti-butyral choline esterase activity. For the young fronts, we see an IC50 of 9.74 microgram per mil, whereas in the mature fronts, it is about tenfold lower the activity. So here, we can see that there's a lot of differences um, between the fronts of the same fern at different maturity stages. And then we also compare um, the methanol extracts of the young fronts and the matured fronts. Um, we spotted on the TLC plate, and following that, um, we have sprayed the TLC plate with aluminum chloride in order to detect the flavonoids. And you can see that it's one major flavonoid in the young front, whereas in the mature fronts, we can see a number of flavonoids. Okay, we, uh, later I will explain the compounds that we have isolated. We compared the anti-choline esterase activity and we found that for the young fronts, the activity is very low. Whereas in matured front, the activity is 19.77 IC50. Um, by the way, I would like to mention, we actually uh, tested anti-choline esterase activity using acetylcholine esterase as well as butyral choline esterase, but we found that this plant is specifically active towards butyral choline esterase. So indicating that there is a potential for use uh, in the treatment of late Alzheimer's disease. And then we also compare the DBPH radical scavenging activity of the young and matured fronts. And we found that the young fronts has weaker uh, uh, DBPH radical scavenging activity compared to the matured fronts. So this again shows that at different stage of maturity, the plant can show very different phytochemicals as well as biological activity. We then proceeded to isolate the compounds in the young front as well as the matured front. Okay, from the matured fronts, we've obtained seven flavonoids. Okay, A to G. And this, all these flavonoids contain the camphorol and glycol, as well as the glycoside unit. So for compound A to C, you can see the simple aglycon and the sugar unit. Compound A contains a rhamnose. Compound B is a glucose. Compound C has a ram uh, rhamnose uh, glucose. Compound D and G are actually the, the glucose were acylated with a para kumaric group, but at different different position. This is at position six prime prime, and compound D is at position three prime prime. And then we have compound E and F, which were substituted uh, with two hydrocinamic group. Okay, for compound E we have a kumara unit here a thorough unit, and for compound F, we have two Kumara units substituted on the glucose. And then we proceeded to evaluate the structure activity relationship 
between these compounds. And we found that the compound that has a remnant sugar has very low DBPH radical scavenging effect. But if the sugar is switched to glucose, then you see an increase in the DBPH radical scavenging effect. And when you have a glucose and a remnant, then you get something in between. Similarly, if the compound is acylated with a parahydrosinamic acid, regardless of the position, whether it's a 3' prime prime or 6' prime prime, it shows very weak radical scavenging effect. But when it is di-substituted, then you can see that the DBPH radical scavenging activity increases, especially with a ferrural uh, substituent here compared to the Camaro uh, substituent. Okay. Then we also tested the cytotoxic effect, uh, and we found that compound A to D has weak cytotoxicity, as well as compound G, whereas for compound E and F, both showed cytotoxic activity at around 20 micromolar against two different breast cancer cell lines. The next friend that I would like to introduce is Dichronapteris linearis from the Glitchenacier family. This one is used traditionally as a poultice for treatment of fever, ulcer, wounds, and boils. So we have decided to evaluate the antibacterial as well as the wound healing effect of this fern. So we have carried out a, a subsequent extraction using hexane followed by DCM and then methanol. And we find weak antibacterial activity of the methanol extract against Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and E. coli. We further fractionated the methanol extract into seven subfractions, and we can see that there's improved in improvement in activity for these two subfractions compared to the extract. And then we proceeded to look under SEM, and we found that it's the control Staphylococcus aureus after treated with SF5 for about six hours, we can see uh, bacterial lysis. And then we have also com uh, tested the antioxidant activity of all these subfractions, and we found that coincidentally, SF4 and SF5 also show strong antioxidant activity. So we have decided to look at the wound healing properties of uh, delinearis uh, subfraction using an in vitro assay. So first, we have grown fibroblast cell in a monolayer. And then we uh, create an artificial wound by providing a scratch to create a gap in between the cells. So you can see this. So after eight hours of treatment with SF5, we can clearly see that there is cell migration towards <coughs> the gap. And after 24 hours, the gap is fully closed. So if you look at the control, even at eight hours, there's not no sign of still no sign of migration. By 24 hours, you can see still there are many gaps in between. Okay? So this clearly shows that SF5 promotes cell migration. And then we evaluated whether um, SF5 could protect the cells uh, against oxidative stress induced by hydrogen peroxide. So we have done the experiment in two ways. We have the pretreatment and the post-treatment assay. In the pretreatment assay, we've treated the cells first with SF5, and then remove the plant fraction, and then we add in hydrogen peroxide to induce oxidative stress. And we can see that the viability has dropped to about 20% for the control group. And even at various concentration of SF5, you don't see any uh, improvement. <coughs> increasing uh, the cell viability. But in a post-treatment experiment, um, whereby we have um, induced stress using hydrogen peroxide on the cells, 
and then followed by the treatment with SF5. And then you can see that clearly at this concentration, the viability of the cells increase, even up to threefold at 250 micrograms per mil versus the control. So we can see that um, SF5 is actually protecting the cells against hydrogen peroxide induced sedative stress. So we have evaluated the phytochemical constituents in SF5. Okay. So far we have isolated five uh, phenolic glycosides and these are very unique structures. Very unique structures. Uh, we were not the first who reported on this compound. Somebody has reported in 2006, but from the same plant. Okay. Um, but we are actually not so sure what this compound does because we have tested the biological activity of this compound. Uh, unfortunately, we are still working. We are still uh, testing. I mean, carrying out the biological assay because we, we do not have enough amount of this. So we have to scale up enough for biological assay, but uh, we have carried out the biological assay on this compound and we found that it is showing weak uh, antioxidant effect and there's also weak antibacterial effect and in fact in the literature, the person who first isolated this compound have tested it against HIV and also found very weak activity. And uh, of course, we need not mention about this compound, this is a known compound camphor or glucoside. It has good antioxidant activity, but low antibacterial effect. So, in conclusion, a number of unique phenolic compounds were isolated from the two fern species which I presented just now. Mm. The combination of the compound in the extract or in the fraction form actually shows better activity compared to the single compounds. So a diverse spectrum of biological activities were observed for these two plants. Therefore, further work should be carried out uh, to evaluate uh, the potential of fruits. And last but not least, I would like to acknowledge my university for providing the funding for this research. Uh, these are my students. These two students is doing her PhD and master's. Uh, were the ones who worked on this project. And I would like to thank my collaborator, uh, Professor Nick Surani Yakov, for carrying out the cytotoxicity assay, and Dr. Vigneshwaran Murugaya for carrying out the anticholine asterase assay. And with this, I thank you. initial focus was on the antioxidant compounds. Right. Okay. And many, so we, we yeah, didn't many, many uh, 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 requirements contain very bitter principles. And also a breaking up, right? A breaking up. You know, that is also very harmful. Hot. Did you taste your friend when uh, before you start to work? No? Maybe <laughs> 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 sometimes very difficult. So uh, I do many times the chew okay the moment and then you can get up and then immediately start to work and then the the activity of antioxidant value is uh, 200 uh, that's 400 micrograms something like that is that active or passive do we have the standard compound to compare for example aspirin acid vitamin C or you know probably some other uh, you mean the antioxidant? Yeah. Antioxidant. 
Uh, we 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 use Trollocs. Trollocs equipment. Not so active. Not so active. Not non active, but almost uh, not active, not active, right? But we we, we compare also against ascorbic acid. Did you? Uh, yes. The compounds did not show good activity, but if you look at the extract. So you you can see that is that this is, yes. So compared to our uh, positive control, is that acid? No, this is the mixture. Uh, this is the extract. Extract. One 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 story or comment. Did you try to, to check the spore, spores, the brown spore under under the leaf, right? Spore, spore. Oh, spore okay. Rice. For for this yeah. fern, it is a dimorphic fern. So yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a sterile fern. So it doesn't right. produce spores. Only the female yes, yes, <laughs> produces. Uh, you heard the spore bites many times, right? And then I try to work with spore bite and such a you know the leaves. Totally different compound. So, could you please collaborate with you and your group as a girls group? Okay, we're working very hard now currently to work with not only you but also the friends. But I have the data here. I'll show you, right? Later, later on. Not quickly, okay? So, thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes, thank you. 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 Thank you.